Hi, this is Math 1120, remote delivery for April 28th, 2020, and we're talking about uh, Sullivan's text, chapters 5.1 through 5.4, and when you see this symbol, you know what to do in 5.1, when to do it. The law of large numbers tells us that as the number of repetitions of a probability experiment increase, the proportion of a certain outcome is if there to get closer and closer to what we call the probability of the outcome. We do have a sample space of a probability experiment, and that's a collection of all possible outcomes. And an event is any collection of outcomes from a probability experiment. An event consists of one outcome or maybe more than one outcome. Events with one outcome are called simple events, and in general they're denoted by using capital letters such as E. You see the events are a set of outcomes. In the following rules, the notation is P of E, just like in your math, it is F of X. Now instead of putting a number or a variable in here, the variable that you're putting in here is a set, and that's the probability that event E occurs. Now, there are some rules of probability. Again, it is a function. So the domain is you put sets in here, but the range is you get a number. And so the probability of any event, E, P of E, must be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. That is, the probability is between 0 and 1. And if you add up all the probabilities of all the events, it is 1. Something must happen. If an event is impossible, the probability is 0. If it's a certainty, the probability is 1. And an unusual event is an event that has a low probability of occurring. A lot of times in statistics classes, they will say less than 5% is unusual, but the cutoff point really depends on you as the analyst. A lot of times we will approximate probabilities using empirical uh, approaches. And a lot of times that means we just run a bunch of trials with experiments and we see how often does event E happen, and that approximates the relative frequency, which is corresponding to the probability of E. Now, sometimes computer simulations are used instead of actual experiments when the expense, danger, or complexity of the model warrants. Uh, the classical model, then, is, is uh, if an event has N equally likely outcomes, and if the number of ways that it can occur is M, and the probability of it happening, and again, this is a theoretical analytical one, is m divided by n. And so if s is the sample space, you'd say the number of things in the sample space divided by the number in e, and that is the probability of event e. And sometimes people just say probability, like if you ask a, a manager, oh, what's the probability something happened, they don't do an analysis, you say, I guess it was 50-50. Um, here is a common sample space, and you see if you roll a pair of die, and you see you have one die is red and the other die is uh, black, and so you have 36 possible outcomes because there are six ways the black can come up and there are six ways the red can come up. Um, and so here's a problem. Uh, Billy rolled a nine, and you win if you roll a higher score than him. What's the probability you win, and what's the probability you lose? You know what to do and when to do it. Let's see how you did. Well, Billy rolled a 9, so that means his scores are along here. All of these numbers add up to 9. And the numbers that are bigger than 9 then are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So there is a probability of 6 out of 36 or 1 out of 6 that you would win. The probability that you lose is going to be the numbers that are less than 9 that you get. And so we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, and then it will be 6, and then it will be 5 again, and so on and so forth. And so the probability you lose is you're less than that, but there's also a probability that you tie and the probability that you tie is 1, 2, 3, 4, is 1 out of 9. So you see you could compute things with that kind of um, question. And sometimes I ask questions like this. I don't know if I do this time or not. Here's another common sample space. is a deck of cards, so make sure you understand what a deck of cards looks like. 
All right, here's a problem. I'm going to ask you to pause, read the problem carefully, try to do it, and then return, and we'll see how you did. Let's see how you did. So here are the answers, the sample spaces, all the numbers that you could get. Uh, the chance that you get 8 is 1 out of the 38 possibilities. And so 1 out of 38 is about 2.63%. And getting an odd, um, 18 of them are odd, so 18 out of 38 is 9 out of 19, or this fraction is the probability of getting an odd. It's about a half, but you see there's more, one more, um, there's a, you have the double zero, which is an additional odd, or excuse me, additional even. Here's another problem. Uh, you know what to do and when to do it. Go ahead and read this. Give it a go. Let's see how you did. So the probability of your birthday is the first day of the month is 12 out of 365. There are seven months with 31 days, so it's 7 out of um, 365 because there are seven days that are the 31st. Uh, since there are 31 days in December, it's 31 out of 365. And November is 1 out of 365. Again, another problem from uh, Section 5.1. Uh, you know what to do and when to do it. Let's see how you did. Well, there were a total of this many students in the survey. And you can think of them as trials, and then you just take the ratio. So it's 118 out of 45.21, or it's a little better than 2%. And you can compute all these. Yes, it is unusual because that is less than 5%. See you in section 5.2.